Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run for the UK we have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as for the rest of this working week it is looking very cold indeed as we see a truly arctic air mass moving in from the north. Now, it only was summer about 10 days ago, so it isn't going to be anything too ridiculous, but temperatures by day may struggle to get into the double digits in the north, just about getting into the low to maybe mid-teens further southwards, and we could see a reasonably widespread frost in northern areas, especially over higher ground, and temperatures could even get towards 2 or 3 degrees in southern England through Friday and Saturday. So yes, looking very chilly indeed. We are going to see showers around as well, and some of them could have a wintry flavour over the higher ground of Scotland but as we progress towards the weekend it will be turning drier now we are going to see a complete reverse of fortune as we head into next week looks like the weather is all over the place at the moment it was very warm last week very cold this week and next week it looks like it could be going warm and dry once again now as we are progressing through September of course it is going to become more and more difficult to see very warm or hot conditions but next week looks like we could see high pressure sat right over the top of us with above average air mass and it could be pretty stunning indeed complete reversal compared to this week so that is one good thing and we'll explore that in the second half of the video so do remember if you enjoy my videos which do like and subscribe and remember for me on Twitter as well the links in the description now if you start on the live radar you can see at the moment the low pressure system that is sat out into the north sea where this spiral is just to the west of norway this is dragging in that very cold northerly wind and its cold front is now clearing out to the east you can see we've got some quite persistent rain just towards the south coast heading into parts of france now and then behind that we've got the actual cold front bound Boundary where we have got a squall feature developing here we do have some quite heavy rain gusty winds and it's looking pretty torrential for a time now fortunately this is clearing quite quickly we're calling this around half eight so this is quickly clearing to our south and east and it is drier behind but quickly uh, as that northwesterly wind picks up we are starting to see some quite heavy blustery showers moving in and as i said some of these have a bit of a wintry flavor over the highest ground of scotland Again, really only the top tips of the mountains where uh, well, we don't really have anyone living, uh, more just uh, people going out on walks and stuff like that. But regardless, still some snow for the first 10 days of September. Pretty ridiculous indeed, considering some of these regions were mid to high 20s this uh, about five days ago last Friday. So yeah, huge reversal. And as I said, we could see that reverse once again next week. Now, if you look at the temperatures it's at around half eight, you can see it's still reasonably mild further southwards, uh, but it is turning quite a bit colder in the coming hours. It has definitely felt fresher today, but it's nothing compared to what we're arriving through tomorrow and for the rest of the working week. And then you can see for Scotland, much cooler, those yellows starting to get worn away, and those lighter blues appearing over the highest ground of Scotland. That's where we've got the very cold air that is starting to entrench itself on our shores. Now, if you look at the latest UKV, if you start on the precipitation, you can see that school feature slowly clearing to the southeast through the rest of this evening. And then as we head into tomorrow, we just see a day of heavy blustery showers and some sunshine. So it doesn't look terrible, but if you are in the north and west, close to those, nor uh, to those Irish Sea and Atlantic coasts, then you could see quite a few hefty showers. Some areas will see very little or none at all. Others could be, could be peppered quite badly by some of these showers. Now, as we do progress through Wednesday into Thursday, it remains cold and we could see some frosts potentially into Thursday morning. And you see as we head through Thursday afternoon, more heavy blustery showers moving in, but nowhere near as widespread and more exclusively towards those northwestern facing coasts. As we progress into Friday, we start to see a ridge of high pressure building in. So even though the cold air is starting to ease, we actually could see our coldest night into Friday morning as we got clear skies, cold air mass aloft, and we could see those temperatures dropping down to low single digits quite widely or even touching freezing or below freezing in rural areas. As we progress through Friday, it doesn't look like too bad of a day, but rain moving in from the west. And then as we head into Saturday, more of that heavy rain slowly approaches as we head into the weekend. And that's a sign of a change in air mass. Initially, it is going to be a little bit more rainy 
a little bit more cloudy through the weekend. But by the end of Sunday, into Monday and Tuesday, high pressure will be building in and it does look like it will turn much sunnier, much warmer and much drier. You can already see that cold air mass is sweeping in at the moment, turning it much, much colder over the coming days. You can see the air mass peaks really through Thursday into Friday. You see it starts to get moved away on Friday, but still has entrenched itself. And we do see those clear skies as we see those temperatures in a minute are looking very cold indeed. As we move through Friday, the cold air gets pushed away and into the weekend, we return back to average air masses. And it could, as I said, increase further into next week. Now, if you look at those two meter max temperatures, you can see this afternoon temperatures peaking around the high teens in the south and the east. Not going to be seeing that over the next few days, though. As we head into Wednesday, temperatures widely single digits, uh, mostly high single digits, but could drop towards one or two degrees across Scotland. And you can see into Wednesday afternoon, struggling to get much above 10 to 12 degrees for many areas, maybe a 14 or 15 at best further southwards but again with that strong northwesterly wind it will not feel that warm it'll feel more like 10 or 12 degrees so yeah pretty chilly indeed and again it's that change compared to what we saw last week and over the past few days it's that sudden drop in temperatures which will make it uh, and it will make it even feel even colder and exacerbate the impacts as we head into thursday Again, very cold overnight temperatures, more around the six, seven degree mark. And again, for those areas, rural areas, especially for Northern England and Scotland, down towards the low single digits, touching freezing, wherever you see those blues, that's the where we have the risk of frost. So again, mainly over higher ground, but you can't rule it out for these rural areas of Southern Scotland, Northern uh, England, and just generally actually more widespread Scotland as well. Through Thursday afternoon, again, maybe touch 14, 15 degrees, but most areas, low double digits or high single digits. And then it's a Friday morning. That could be the coldest morning of the week. By 6 a.m., widely three to six degrees, could drop even lower, even in southern England. And then for quite large parts of Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Northern England, and parts of Wales, we could see those temperatures dropping towards freezing. And again, it looks pretty likely in rural areas and over higher ground. Again, that isn't that many people. Majority will not be seeing a frost, will not be seeing ice, but uh, it is pretty remarkable for the first half of September. As I said, considering a week ago, we were seeing temperatures around the 28 degree mark. Exactly a week ago on Friday, it was 28 degrees. And instead, we're waking up to a frost. Pretty remarkable indeed. But as we head through Friday afternoon, it will be slowly turning a bit milder, 14, 15 in the south and a bit milder further northwards. And then not as much of a chance of a frost into Saturday, maybe still the coldest temperatures in the east and the south where we hang on to the colder air. But for all by Saturday afternoon, more towards the mid to high teens. And for Sunday, it will be a similar picture, maybe even slightly milder than that. And I would expect us to get back into the low 20s or even mid 20s next week as we do start to see that warmer, dry conditions prevailing once again. Now, do go over to the latest GFS. You can see this in detail. We do start with those upper air temperatures on. You can see a very strong northerly wind pushing in at the moment. Very cold indeed. Coldest for our latitude uh, across the whole of the screen here. All the way through Canada, North America, through Europe, in towards Eastern Europe and Asia. Nowhere on this chart has got it as cold as we do um, on our latitude. So, yeah, we are pretty remarkable uh, as we head through the rest of this week. As I said though, into the weekend, milder air will return initially with low pressure and a westerly flow. But into the start of next week, look at this high pressure builds in and the upper air temperatures go above average. We look at the temperature deviation, yellows and oranges develop straight over the top of us. And we put on the pressure, look at that big high pressure slap bang over the top of us. The only thing that could happen is a bit of an easterly flow, which could give a little bit of a chill to the air for eastern coasts. But if that does tilt to more of a southeasterly, like it's trying to here, then it could turn much warmer once again right into the extended range we do lose the higher pressure and we do start to see a little bit more unsettled and maybe more cooler air moving in but really this is the last couple of days of this run the majority around that day five to day 12 range looks very warm and looks very dry so actually even though it's very cold at the moment uh, or it's turning very cold for the next few days it's almost a blip in a much warmer outlook into next week and it looks a lot uh it looks pretty sustained as well into next week if you compare to the latest gm again that very strong northerly wind coming in at the moment a classic northerly snap with that high pressure up towards greenland uh, again you, this wouldn't look out of place in the middle of winter 
uh, for seeing a few days of very cold conditions. But we're seeing this in early September, pretty ridiculous. And eventually it does topple. High pressure tries to build in, but really only truly builds in for Monday and Tuesday next week. And then dominates over the top of us. Unlike the GFS, not really a strong easterly flow, which means it will actually be even warmer and even drier. No chance of any showers. We put on the precipitation here. Very little. Again, few lighter patches. And again, that's under potentially some thicker cloud. But looking widely dry and looking widely warm. Temperature deviation well above average. 8 to 10 degrees above average for the Republic of Ireland. And if we do put on those 2 meter temperatures, widely touching the high teens or 20 degrees. And again, this is at midday. Give it another couple of hours. We'd be looking at the low 20. So very, very warm from the GM indeed. If we finally look at the latest ECMWF, again, that very strong northerly wind coming in. And it's the same story for next week. High pressure builds in. And again, it's right over the top of us. Does have an easterly wind, more of a southeasterly tilt. So it would be a warmer direction. Uh, you can see this here, warmer air coming in from the southeast, but still looking very pleasant indeed and it is looking reasonably dry as well. Yes, there is the odd chance of a few showers if we actually get this to load. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's gonna load. There would be the odd chance of a few showers in that sort of scenario, but we wouldn't be expecting much with the pressure that high. Yes, looks very, very pleasant indeed. Just unfortunately, let's get the next, through the next three or four days of cold, very cold conditions in places. And we can see this exemplified on the latest ensembles. Look at that massive drop over the next few hours down towards zero degrees at 850 HPA. As I said, about seven or eight degrees below average for the rest of this working week. And then we see a big rise again through Saturday and Sunday back towards average, and then trends of being about three or four degrees above average next week with some even warmer runs appearing there. The best thing I would say is not just the temperatures, it is the lack of precipitation. Very few spikes into next week and for London the rest of this week, but for widely for widespread areas, it will be next week where it is very dry. Still lots of showers this week in the north and the west. Next week though, looking very pleasant indeed under that high pressure. And as I said, it looks warm as well. If we're on those two meter temperatures, you can see hardly getting into the uh, low teens here for London and then back into the high teens or low twenties into next week and again not only the surface temperatures five six seven eight degrees warmer but we are also going to see a big change in the fuel light temperature I feel like temperature this week even in london may struggle to get into the double digits with that northwesterly wind but next week it'll feel more like summer again with the sunshine beating down on us it will be very pleasant indeed so yes very much all over the place but positive signs if you don't like this early uh, early little spell of autumn to winter weather. Another thing I do want to just look at is the dew points because it is pretty remarkable. Look at this. We're going from around a 15 degree dew point or even higher down towards close to freezing and then back up into the low double digits or even low teens. Um, yeah, pretty remarkable, this cold air mass. As again, this is not. This is something that wouldn't feel out of place in sort of early spring, late autumn or even early winter. Uh, again, we're seeing this in early September. Pretty remarkable. And then if we finish by looking at the latest ECMWF ensembles, it is broadly exactly the same. A lack of precipitation next week, a few more spikes, but again, there are more ensemble members here. And then a big rise from those very cold air masses this week. Back towards something around average or above average. A lot more runs, though, are above average. Uh, lots are like three or four degrees, a few more like five to ten Again, if we go in the safe side, it just takes three or four degrees above average. That's still in the southeast, looking at low 20s, so looking very pleasant indeed. Something to look forward to next week, but we've got to get through the next few days, though. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you stay safe if you're going to be affected by any of the cold weather over the next few days, whether it's just simply feeling cold or whether it is in those isolated areas, some ice and frost do stay safe. That said, though, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.